so 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 this is we're going to begin by looking at uh, i don't think what is this uh, lectures number 35 huh? so basically it's a tutorial class i'm just uh, putting down this so that i can I know what to say so so okay so let's let's look at this this guy here which is the problems on miscellaneous topics i will uh, I think I should be able to cut and paste from here to Windows Journal also. So I'll just I'll do that so that the problems are also recorded. Okay, so we'll begin with uh, convolutional codes because I think that's probably the area that's fresh in your mind. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's just take this question. Okay, so that's a question. So now all of you can start at the question. Start answering is the next thing you will So, what does this bracket F mean in the question? Yeah, it showed up in the final exam. So, it must be an important question, right? So. easy enough simple okay so part a should be very very trivial right how many d flip flops do you need three and then you connect it up so for part b you have to change it into systematic form so what will you do so i'll just do part b real quick write down g of d s okay you can do it in many ways so i think i like this better Okay, if you want, you can write it in this way. Right? And then uh, do an implementation. Do You know how to do this. The form in which I did that. You put a plus before the first one and then you get W of D and then you do this. It's very easy to draw. So let me draw this. Just for fun. Right? Then you pull this guy out. This guy out. You get your V1 D. Okay, V0 is the same as U0. Okay, so it's a simple, simple solution for that problem. Let's go back and see if there's any other problem. Okay, so you also have to draw one stage of the trellis for a systematic encoder. Okay, so it's an eight-state trellis, right? So one can easily do that also. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So the eighth question. It's right here. Okay, so ignore this part. I think uh, I don't know how to make you ignore this part. This part is not relevant. It's actually part of the previous question. Okay. So the eighth question also has an F, which means it again showed up in the fence. Can you read it? It's okay. You want me to blow it up a little bit more? Right. 
I don't know. It just refuses to select. I don't know. I think they have to undo the undo the paste. Undo the paste. So you guys have. Problem is, I did so many ink strokes after that. Uh, ah, there it is. Now I can do this, right? It's probably slightly better. So basically the picture is given to you and you have to do the reverse. It's not too difficult. I'll do part B. I think once once you do part B or you can also do the one stage of the trellis. It's not too difficult. I'll do part B because I can write down the answer very easily. What is G of D? Same as the previous. <laughs> 1 plus D part 3. 1 plus d plus d squared plus d part 3. Now, how will you answer the part c? Part c is an interesting question. Encode the infinite, I'm sorry. Yeah, so u of d is basically 1 by 1 plus d. Okay, and you have to multiply u of d with g of d. Okay, so what will you get? So, you should use some factoring knowledge you have. Okay, so u of d is 1 by 1 plus d. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply g of d with u of d to get 1 plus d power 3 by 1 plus d and then 1 plus d plus d square plus d power 3 by 1 plus d. Okay, right, and the way I've chosen these number, these uh, polynomials, they will nicely divide. Okay, what happens when you divide 1 plus d power 3 with 1 plus d? Remember, it's all modulo 2, right? So it's almost as if you're working with coefficients from g of 2 okay so you know how to do this factoring how will you divide 1 plus d by 3 by 1 plus d if all if all else fails what will you do long division right 1 plus d by 3 put it inside put 1 plus d on this side and divide you will get the answer right there's nothing else you have to worry about but if you can see the factoring easily then you will cancel out very easily also. but long division will work okay don't don't think long division is a bad idea okay it's a very good idea it will work very nicely and if you do that you'll see you get 1 plus d plus d squared and 1 plus d squared here. Okay, so this is one of those catastrophic encodings. Okay, you get an output of uh, weight 5 and the input is of infinite weight. Okay, that's that problem. Okay, so the next question is also, but it's got only two states and then you've got trellis and then you have to decode, but well, that's just bitter B. And there's one thing here which is decoding over the BSC. Okay, so I did not talk about decoding convolutional codes over the binary symmetric channel, but it's easy enough, right? What will you do? How will you come? Only thing that will change is branch metric. Okay, so how will you compute branch metric now? In the BPSK AWGN case, your branch metric was the Euclidean distance between the received thing and the symbol vector. So for binary symmetric channel, what should be the branch metric? The Hamming distance between the received received uh, bits corresponding to that stage and the the output bits corresponding to each branch. So you do that and then you do the exact same algorithm, you will decode over the BSC. Right? Everything is exactly the same. Okay, so nothing else will change except that the branch metric computation will change. Branch metric will become Hamming distance. Maybe I'll illustrate that for this example. Okay, so this is problem nine. Okay, so the trellis is very, very easy. It's only a two-state trellis, right? The output is itself and 1 plus d. Okay, so g of d is what? 1 and 1 plus d. So if you have to do the trellis, 
it's very easy if you have input 0 output will be 0 0 if you have input 1 output will be 1 1 okay in the next stage the trellis will become complete so this is 0 this is state state 0 state 1 okay maybe you maybe it's a good idea to write the state inside the inside that box then you can put the state metric below okay so 0 0 1 okay so those are the states and uh, if you are if you are at state 1 then you put 0 as the input you will get 0 0 0 1 right sorry and then if you give 1 as an input it will be 1 0 okay those are my transitions and I think there were four information bits right so I have to repeat this twice more and then there is transition to 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. this is the state trellis corresponding to four information bits and one extra bit for termination to the zero state okay and I can repeat the same input output for each of those things I don't have to do that once again okay so what are the outputs on a BSC the outputs they have given are 1101 1000 I mean it's not really relevant but I, I can take any other output also but I'll take the same output just for fun 11 what else is there 110110 and then 0010 okay so when you run the beta b the first thing you do is compute branch matrix for all the branches in this case you can easily compute branch matrix for all the branches you write write down the branch matrix below 2 0 1 1 0 2 and then you write 1 1 2 0 0 2 1 1 this is 1 this is 2 okay those are my branch matrix and then you keep doing the state metric from the left hand side you start with 0 here okay right you figured out how I computed the branch metric right? just hamming distance between those corresponding bits and the okay so here maybe I'll use the red pen to show the survivor paths okay if I do if I look on the on the, uh, the other side of stage 1 there is only one path entering each state so there is no real choice to make so I can pick out the survival paths like this okay and my state metrics are 2 and 0 okay so now here I have a choice okay 2 plus 1 is 3 for that path and 0 plus 0 is 0 for this path so I will pick this path okay and 0 here 0 plus 2 is 2 2 plus 1 is 3 so I will pick this path okay 2 that's it keep proceeding like this you will quickly get to the other side it's very very easy okay 0 plus 1 is 1 2 plus 2 is 4 so you pick 1 here you do 0 plus 1 that is 1 and then 1 plus 0 is 1 1 plus 1 is 2 and then you pick this guy 1 plus 1 okay so the survival path finally is this guy okay so now we can go back very easily and write down what u cap should be what should u cap be the path corresponding to this guy right so it should be 1 here you have 0 then 0 0 0 well the last 0 is irrelevant so we will stop that's it that was your u cap A very simple uh, decision to make ok the same thing if you want to do for bpfk awgen a little bit more complicated all these numbers will uh, be computed but 
one can do it. It's not too easy. Actually, for even for BPS KWGN, you don't have to do the Euclidean distance. You don't have to do R minus S square summation. You can do the dot product R dot S, and then what will you do for the state metric? You'll have to get the maximum metric. Okay, so you have to maximize the correlation, not minimize. So you'll pick the path with maximum metric always. If you do that with correlation, it'll be much faster. It'll be exactly the same as what was there. Okay, so that's one more idea you can use in an exam situation to speed up your computation. Okay, so that's uh, that's that. Okay, so the question 10 is about uh, some several observer controller canonical forms which we did not do. So question 10 is technically out of syllabus, but let me point out one thing: the G of D you see on board for question 10 is what? It's a two by three thing. There's two input streams coming in and three output streams going out, and one can easily do it. You do U1 of D, U2 of D. Then all you have to do is V1 of D is summations coming out. But you will see there are two different ways of thinking about drawing the implementation. And you will see that those correspond to observer and controller canonical forms. And one of them will be better from a number of states point of view. Okay, so that's the brief background to question 10. But I didn't I didn't do that in this course at least. So you don't have to worry too much about it. But that's how the ex that's a general more general example for a general convolutional code which has got more than one input stream coming in. Okay, so that's how it works. Okay, so th those are all the questions I have for convol convolutional codes, and uh, and I've had a tendency to either ask or not ask questions from convolutional codes. Sometimes I ask, sometimes I don't ask. Depends on depends on how the other problems shape up, right? So because convolutional codes on at one side is quite trivial. There's nothing from from an exam point of view. There's nothing non-trivial that I can ask. Right? The only thing I can ask is give you a G of D. You do the uh, the real difficult parts in convolutional codes. We didn't see. <laughs> we didn't see in this class. So the only thing is drawing trellis and doing Viterbi decoding. It's, it's quite easy. Okay, so there's nothing much to ask in that. Any any other question on convolutional codes? Obviously, I can assume safely that nobody has ever seen this set of questions before, right? So none of you are really familiar with these questions. So uh, so it's okay. Let's see By the way, these questions are available for you, right? And I've also added a few. In the previous exams, I'll send you the latest version. You can put it up. Okay, so that's all about convolutional codes. Let's go back to other fun stuff. Okay, so you see the first question here asks you to do simulation of syndrome decoding, ML decoding, and bitwise MAP decoding for the 7-4 Hamming code and the 3-1 repetition code, and you have to find the coding gain. In terms of EB over N0, you have to do basically BER versus EB over N0 plot. Okay, so even if you are, uh, I think I think this is, this is very useful. Just doing the simulation will give you an idea, but you know most of you may not do it. Maybe you are doing other simulations, but some simulation like this is very useful to do. Okay, so question number two actually I did in class. Okay, but I want to go through that very quickly. Show that the soft ML and bitwise MAP decoders for the N1 repetition code. Are identical over an AWGN channel under BPSK modulation. Okay, so I want you to spend some time doing that. So basically, set up the soft ML decoder for the N1 repetition code and the bitwise MAP decoder for the N1 repetition code, and you'll see both of them come up with the exact same criteria for deciding between 0 and 1. Please do that. Take some time and do that. BPSK AWGN. And you can also find an exact expression for probability of bit and block error. And you'll see in terms of EBOR and not, it's it will lie right on top of the uncoded <coughs> curve. Right? If you remember this. Long time back we did this when I started off, showed you how N1 repetition code in EBOR and not does not give you any coding here. Okay, so do that. Okay, what are the code words? The code itself is all zeros and all ones. So if you do BPSK modulation, the symbol vectors corresponding to all zeros is all plus one. The symbol vector corresponding to all ones is all minus one. And suppose you receive a received vector R, which is R1, R2, 
R N. Okay, if you do ML decoding, soft ML decoding, what will your C hat be? How will you decide C hat? It's argument of. Yeah, so you can do it in the simplest way as dot product, right? You can, I also showed you how minimum distance is the same as this for the argument of maximization over the symbol vectors r dot s okay right so what condition do you get finally can you simplify this condition it's okay so that's the condition if you do this you'll see finally you'll say c hat is all zeros if what summation of ri is greater than 0 okay it is all ones else okay so the only thing you have to compute is summation ri okay if you want to decode maximum like do if you want to do maximum like decoding for the repetition code you have to do summation ri if it is greater than 0 then you conclude that what was transmitted was 0 otherwise you conclude what was transmitted was 1 okay what do you do for bitwise map There's only one bit to decide, right? There's only one message bit. So we can take that as bit one. Okay, so if you want, you can take that as bit two also. All of them are same, they're supposed to be the same, the message bits. Take just one bit, okay, and then you have to find what? Probability that the bit was zero given the entire received vector. How do you find the ratio of those two things? And then there's a formula, right? I gave you a simple formula with capital L and small L you can use okay so if you do that you'll see capital L0 is the same as what L0 L1 L2 okay or L1 L2 L3 I don't know I think I've been numbering it as 1 2 3 no so I don't want to put 0 suddenly you get that what is l1 la is e power 2 ri by sigma square that's the likelihood ratio for each bit the final likelihood ratio the a posteriori likelihood ratio will be the product of each of those things okay so in the numerator you'll have all terms which have zero in the first bit in the denominator you'll have all all code words which have one in the first bit and then you divide throughout by what so you only consider zeros right if there's one it becomes <coughs> you replace that with one why why because i'll divide throughout by the product of this the one probability so all of those things will cancel to give me only likelihood ratios so you can write the whole thing in terms of likelihood ratios so only the zeros will matter okay so if you do that if you remember that formula you'll see capital l1 becomes l1 l2 l3 and if you use that simplification you see this also becomes e power 2 by sigma square into summation ri now what will your decision be here you have to say it's all zeros if l1 is greater than 1 okay and if l1 is less than 1 you say it is 1 this is likelihood ratio if you take log of that then you can say greater than 0 less than 0 and you see it matches exactly with the other condition because sigma sigma square is positive right so everything depends on the same thing. okay same as ml okay so both soft ml and bitwise map for the repetition code will do simply summation ri and if it is greater than zero you say it is all zeros if it is less than zero you say it is all ones okay so to find probability of block error I think I did that also. I'll quickly tell you how to do that. You say find probability of error given that all zeros was transmitted. And since the whole thing is symmetric, you can say that will be the same as the overall probability of error. And given all zeros are transmitted, each of the RIs become IID Gaussians with mean plus 1 and variance sigma squares. Summation RA becomes a Gaussian random variable with mean 3 and variance 3 sigma square like people are very comfortable <laughs> dealing with IID Gaussian random variables okay so once you come to 3 sigma square then probability that sigma ra is greater than 0 is very easy so it will be q function okay, q of 3 by root 
3 sigma. Okay, so I'll get q of root 3 by sigma. But then if you adjust with eb over n0, right? Sigma in terms of eb over n0, you'll simply get q of root 2 eb over n0, which is the same as the uncoded case. Okay, so you'll finally get probability of error to be q of root 2 eb over n0, which is the same as uncoded. So you can conclude repetition codes don't give you much coding gain. Okay. So the next problem, yeah. So three and four are quite similar. As in, you're given a code, then you have to come up with uh, soft ML and bitwise MAP decoders. So let me just do. Let me do. What should I do? Let me do. Let me do 3. 3 looks like a little bit more slightly simpler problem. Okay. So you have to always start when you do ML, MAP and all that, what, what's the first step? What do you need to know for doing bitwise MAP, ML decoders? You have to know, you have to enumerate all the code words. Okay, so if you don't enumerate all the code words, you can't write down the expressions very easily. Okay, so you enumerate all the code words. Okay, go ahead, enumerate all the code words for this. So the way it's written down, it's systematic. Where will you put the message bits and where will you put the parity bits? The way it's written down. First three are parity, the last two are message bits, right? So you put the message bits down and then you compute the, the code words. The first code word is the easiest code word to write down. Okay, the other code words are slightly more difficult, but in this case it's quite simple enough. Okay, so one can write down very easily. Okay, so Check my calculations, make sure they are right. Okay. So from here you can come convert to symbol vectors. Okay. So if you convert to symbol vectors, you'll get all plus ones here. You'll get minus one, minus one, plus one, plus one, minus one here, so on. Okay. So those are the symbol vectors. I'm going to do that in my head. I'm not going to write down the symbol vector conversion. Okay. Suppose you are given a received received vector R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. How will you implement a soft ML decoder? Okay, the formula is the same argument of the maximum of all the correlations. So you have to compute the four correlations. What are the four correlations you have to compute? Okay, so the correlations you have to compute are okay. So maybe I'll call them uh, A1, A2, A3, A4. A1 is what? First correlation is with the all zero code word. That will be simply R1, R2, R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus R5. Second correlation I have to compute is with this guy. It will be minus R1 minus R2 plus R3 plus R4 minus R5. The next correlation is with okay. So it's quite it's quite simple. Simple, right? Okay. So one problem that I've asked before in one of the previous exams is how to, what is the minimum number of additions you have to do to compute these four correlations? Okay. So not in an optimal way, but at least in a rough way, how many correlations, how many additions do you think you need to compute all the four correlations? One brute force way is what? Four times four, which is? 16. If we, give, if we do 16 addition, do, don't worry about the multiplication by minus 1. Okay, so we'll say that is trivial. We'll assume that that is very trivial. Doesn't cost anything. Okay, additions cost a lot. Okay, so I, I love to say 16 is one number which is brute force. Can you reduce it in any way? What can you do?
suggest something man come on can you Computer. can you say something compute compute the full sum that's four additions and then you do what okay i don't know i'll tell you what i observe which is very simple to do okay so you notice you can do r3 plus r4 that or minus of r3 plus r4 appears everywhere another thing you'll notice is r2 plus r5 that or minus of r2 plus r5 will appear everywhere okay so you can do simplifications like that so it's enough if you add r3 to r4 once and r2 to r5 once that's two additions right and then after that you have how many additions per uh, thing two more additions after that okay so 2 times 4 is 8 plus 2 10 i can do it in 10 okay that's one way i'm not saying that's the simplest maybe there are more smart ways of simplifying that further okay but definitely 16 is not the simplest way there are some simpler number of simpler ways of implementing this 10 additions one can one can imagine being able to do this okay is that clear okay so a question like this might be interesting to ask okay so how do you simplify the number of additions so in fact i think you must have seen this question somewhere the number of marks will depend on the number of additions you actually have it will be something minus the number of additions so you decrease the number of additions you'll get more marks okay so that's the incentive for you okay all right so that's the ml decoder so the ml decoder is not complete after this what do you have to do you have to find the maximum okay that will involve three comparisons can you find the maximum with three comparisons yeah you can find okay so you do three comparisons you find the maximum once you find the maximum you can go back and output the most likely code okay so that's what you do for soft ml okay how do you do bitwise map can you write down the likelihood expressions it's enough if you do likelihood expressions for what two bits the two message bits which are the last two okay so you compute capital l4 and capital l5 go ahead and write down those expressions okay so let me copy the code word codes Okay, so what's the expression for L4? Okay, so the first term is the easiest term, right, in the numerator. L1, L2, L3, L4. L5 plus what's the other term? L L3 okay divided by the terms which have one there L2 L5 plus L5 am I right? Sorry what did I do? Second term is L3 L4 I ah, you're right okay i was mentally pulling the l4 out <laughs> you're right you're right you're right okay okay so what is l5 capital l5 again the first term is very easy l5 and then the next term would be l2 l5 the denominator you have l3 l4 plus l5 am i right Am I right? Okay. All right. So there's once again a question of how many multiplications you need and how many additions you need here. Okay. And uh, assuming addition, which is L1? Oh, in the denominator it's L1. Oh, in both cases it's L1. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Actually, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. So then the question is, if you assume multiplication and addition are the same cost. which is better bitwise map is better or or what 
ml is better so all those questions you can answer based on computation components you can do that for these small codes you can't do it for larger codes so for large codes they both are equally hopeless but for small codes maybe there is some some gain to gain that you will get from this okay there is also a question of doing the bsc thing right and for bsc syndrome decoder is optimal you just do the syndrome it's very easy to come up with the syndrome decoder I'm not going to do that and then the question is can you come up with an example of a received word where the syndrome decoder soft ml and bitwise map actually give you different outputs okay it's i think possible but uh, it's usually very difficult to come up with some example such examples okay at least soft ml and uh, syndrome it's actually quite easy to come up with an example for the bitwise map it's more of a pain because the expressions don't simplify and you can't keep evaluating e power and multiplying but for but you can easily come up with an example where the soft ml and the syndrome decoder will differ okay so you can, you can easily come up with an example okay so let's see where shall we go next we have time here okay okay so the next question question number 5 that you see on the screen there is basically the basically a derivation of the ldpc update for the check notes okay so you remember if you look at the formula it's very very similar to the formula you have for the check note update and ldpc decoding and this is a derivation of that this is just a derivation in a different way it shows you that this the way i derived it you remember the way i derived it was this tan h rule right it showed you how the difference of the probability multiplies when you do this parities and then you get the tan h rule okay that seemed like little different but you were calculating probabilities which means you, sh you should be the same it should be the same as doing uh, some kind of bitwise map decoding for the even weight code okay it should be the same as that and that is what this derivation is all about but it's not too critical i'm going to just leave it at that saying that this is similar to the check note update for ldpc codes okay so question number 6 is very similar to the question we solved just now and you can see the marks is 10 minus na minus nc okay can you see that So N A is the number of additions you did, and N C is the number of comparisons you did. Okay. So I think for this question you can get maximum of six marks. So the sixth question, you can get six marks. I think you can do this whole decoding with two additions and two comparisons or some such thing. It's possible. It's a very simple code. Okay. All right. So I think that's. Okay, so we're ready to jump to problem eleven. Okay, look at that problem eleven and try to answer the question. you can read it you can't read it let me zoom a little bit is better we'll do one more zoom okay so so this this is a This is a relatively simple thing to do, but I mean I didn't do it in class, so I'm going to do that right now. So the question that's asked is, you have to consider two codes. Do you consider consider a Reed-Solomon code? Okay, n is two power m minus one. T error correcting. So what should k be? Two power m minus two t, and the minimum distance will be two t plus one. This is your n k n. d okay so you can correct t symbol errors okay so you are using this over a binary symmetric channel with transition probability p okay so if you have a binary symmetric channel with transition probability p what's the probability of a bit error what's the probability of a bit error if i transmit a bit what's the probability it will be an error p yes okay, so it's true what's the probability of a symbol error if you have each symbol here has M bits, right? What's the probability that the symbol will be an error? 
1 minus 1 minus p to the power m. So that is the first thing you compute. Right? This is the probability that a symbol is in error. Okay? So once you have this probability, say I am doing only part b, right? Part a is coming up with parity check matrix. That is that one to one structure, 1 alpha, alpha square, and then 1 alpha square, alpha square, so on like that. So it is very easy to do. So you go for binary, the BCH code you do it slightly differently, but for each Solomon code you go all the way from alpha to alpha power 2t. Right? That is what you do. That is your, your construction. And uh, this is your probability of symbol error. And then when will you make an error in bounded distance decoding? Whenever there are more than what is your symbol error correcting capability? T. Okay, so if there are more than T symbols in error, then you will make an error with bounded distance decoding. Okay, so what is the probability? See, for what is this is the probability that one symbol is an error. The errors in two symbols are completely independent. Okay, so if you take n symbols together, the distribution for the number of errors will be what? Number of symbol errors will be what type of distribution? We will get a binomial distribution with n trials and probability of error for each trial being ps. Okay, so, you can easily compute the probability that there will be more than t errors. Okay, so, that is the probability of block error. Equals probability that greater than, strictly greater than t symbol errors in n symbols. Okay, so this is a simple binomial expression. You sum from say j equals k plus 1 to, no not k plus 1, sorry t plus 1 to n, right? What do you have to do? n choose j ps power j 1 minus ps to the power n minus j. So, that is a very simple expression that one can write down for probability of block error for the reed solomon code. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. So it is a very simple uh, expression. Suppose I were to worry about what would happen to this expression. For instance, what happens to this expression as p tends to 0? Okay. Do not tell me it becomes 0. Okay. Yeah, of course, it becomes 0 when p becomes 0. Okay. What is a good approximation for very, very low values of p? m times p. Do you see that? See. 1, 1 plus x to the power something, a very good approximation for x being very, very small is 1 plus nx, right? It will be 1 plus nx and then some terms involving x squared. x squared you can ignore compared to x, okay? So, that is a good approximation. So, here it becomes 1 minus mp. Then when you do 1 minus that, you will get ps becomes approximately m times p, okay? So, that is a good approximation as p tends to 0. So, now when p tends to 0, ps tends to m times p. Further, what can you say? Can you approximate this any further? What will be the leading term? PS power j with? Yeah, PS power what? What is j? J varies, no? Yeah, you have to ignore, compared to a particular power of PS, you have to ignore all lower powers. You can do that when PS becomes very, very small. So, what is the dominating power PS? PS to the power T plus 1. So, it, it the, that term will dominate. Okay. So, every other term will actually go off to very, very low value. One can one can imagine as you as it becomes lower and lower, that is the only term that will dominate. Okay. So, of course, you have some coefficients multiplying here. These n choose things also are a little bit dangerous. Okay. So, you have to be watchful of that, but in general, one can say ps part t plus 1 will kind of dominate this expression. Okay. So, it is it's not a bad approximation. It is a reasonable approximation. Okay. All right. So, the other question is for the BCH code. So, BCH code is different from the RS code mainly in two things. First is the number block length is in bits. Secondly, what is the issue? The dimension changes a little bit, right? What is the dimension? So, the BCH code, what is the dimension? N remains the same, 2 power m minus 1. What is the dimension? 
roughly 2 power m minus 1 minus mt. Okay, I know this is a rough thing because it's guaranteed to be greater than or equal to this. Okay, but it's usually very equal to this. And then here again, the minimum distance is greater than or equal to 2t plus 1. In most cases, it will be equal to 2t plus 1. If you take high rate examples, out of 2 power m minus 1 bits, okay, which is n, how many bit errors can I correct? T bit errors I can correct. Okay, so probability of block error is actually relatively simple to write down here. It will be simply j equals t plus 1 to n what n choose j p to the power j 1 minus p to the power n minus j. Okay. All right. So these two are different in one major way. Okay. So the block length here is n symbols. Okay. N symbols is how many bits? N times m bits. It's a lot of bits. And the probability of error is actually controlled by the probability of symbol error as opposed to the probability of bit error in either case. Okay. So that's how the things will differ. Okay. So let's see if we can squeeze in one more problem. Okay, so these problems are slightly more difficult. I want to take time over it. So let me not do that. Okay, we'll do problem 13. 13 is an interesting and simple enough problem. Okay, so I've got a T error correcting RS code of length n over g of 2 power m. Okay, I want you to determine the exact burst error correcting capability of C in bits, assuming you're doing bounded distance decoding. Okay, what do I mean by burst error correcting capability? If there is a sequence of errors, consecutive errors, what length can I tolerate? Okay, can you come up with the exact number? Is it Tm? Am I right if I say TM? No, right? See, it depends on where I start. No, I have to be very careful. Okay, so what is the exact expression in terms of T and M? You come up with the exact number for the maximum burst length that is correctable. What is the. Yeah. Just request some T minus. T minus 1 times M, is that good enough? See, it depends on where you place yourself. You can knock out t minus 2 consecutive symbols and then knock out one bit to the left and one bit to the right. That way you would have knocked out. Well, that's not right, no. So maybe t minus 1 into m. I don't know. Think of it, think of it carefully. So remember what do I want? I want to come up with a number, right? What is burst error correcting capability? All bursts of length, burst error correcting capability or lesser should be correctable. Okay, and there should be some burst of length, burst error correcting capability plus one, which is not correctable. Both should be there. Okay, so what is the minimum length where I can get a non-correctable thing? Should be t minus one times m plus two. Okay, so I can always get t minus one times m plus two to be non-correctable, and any length of t minus one times m plus one will be correctable. Okay, is that right? Think about it. Okay, this is my answer. Think about it for a while and let me know if you can find a burst which is not correctable. I'm sorry? Why do you need the plus one? I'm sorry? Yes. Why plus one? That's the maximum number. <laughs> you want to say, see the thing is if you have each of these guys are symbols maybe i'm wrong let me think about it carefully right each of these guys are symbols which is m bits long right m bits m bits okay right 
I want to have a burst of errors affecting t plus 1 symbols. I want to affect t plus 1 symbols. What is the minimum burst length which will affect exactly t plus 1 symbols? Because if it affects t plus 1 symbols, then I cannot correct it. Okay, That will be t minus 1 times m plus 2. Okay, You take t minus 1 m. Suppose this is t minus 1 times m. Okay, And then you then you right you all these are in error then you make an error here or make an error here which is a consecutive burst and you have affected t plus 1 symbols right so t minus 1 times m plus 2 is not the burst error correcting capability but t minus 1 times m plus 1 i can correct any burst of length t minus 1 times m plus 1 i can correct or below that I can correct. And if it is plus 2 i cannot correct because i can come up with an example where this is uh, hitting me Okay, so this whole burst, I cannot correct. if it is only plus 1, nothing else will really work. You might say, why did I exactly cover t minus 1 here? Maybe that is shifted. But if that is shifted, then I lose only. I right? will only be able to do t. I can't do more than t. So this is the worst case possible. Okay. okay, part B is an interesting thing. You take M code words, capital M code words and do row column interleaving. So what is row column interleaving? You take code word 1, put it as first row. Code word 2, put it as, put it as second row. Likewise, put M code words row wise. And then you shift out column wise. Okay. So if you take the first M symbols in your final output, they will correspond to different code words. Okay. So in that case, what is the exact burst error correcting capability? Try to do a similar calculation. T. Sorry? No, capital M will play a role. I mean, how can capital M not play a role? So, why is capital M disappearing from your answer? You have to have capital M in your answer, right? And you should have small m in your answer. How can you not have those things in your answer? You understand? I am doing symbol level interleaving across different code words right across different code words i'm taking capital m code words so whatever answer you have if you put m equals 1 you should get back this okay if you don't get m equals 1 this then you are making some mistake that's a sanity check go back and check that so do you understand this interleaving i'm talking about okay take a simple example it's very easy to see if you affect a burst of symbols only say for instance if I do this interleaving, if m consecutive symbols are erased or are in error, okay, only one symbol per code word will be affected. But if I do not interleave, if m consecutive symbols are in error, then m symbols of a code word can be in error. Okay, so you get a gain in burst error correcting capability if you interleave. Okay, so what is that exact gain? Just multiply this with m. You sure? Oh, well, it's not quite that simple. <laughs> Think in terms of the way I thought here. What is the worst case situation in which I will make t plus 1 error in, in at least one code word? Okay, In any one code word, I have to make t plus 1 errors. I don't have to make t plus 1 errors in all code words. Any one code word, if I make t plus 1 errors, I am done, right? The whole decoding will fail. Put down a worst case situation like this. Okay, so the answer for some reason for me it seems like this should be the answer. Okay, am I right? Am I wrong? Huh?
okay so actually the exact answer is irrelevant in many applications enough you know, if you have the ballpark number ballpark number is always mt okay and if you do m m m depth interleaving it is capital m into small m into t that's the ballpark number but it's good to know the exact expression in case you're doing the design in some cases you have to do it properly how many of you like this expression huh right does it sound right okay it sounds correct right so you take t minus 1 interleaved things so in each interleaving you have capital m symbols which are from different code words capital m times m times t minus 1 you will hit t minus 1 in everything and then you can hit one guy on the right one guy on the left is that enough that might affect different things no one guy on the right will be the first code word one guy on the left will only be the last code word no so it's not quite right there are more changes needed here okay see you doing it in a sequence and then on the right hand side you will have a symbol corresponding to the first code word on the left hand side you will have a symbol corresponding to the last code word so both of them will only get t plus, plus m right so m looks like is the right guy m or m minus 1 it should be m okay it should be capital m it's m times no that's not m. <laughs> no 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 i think it's more than m i don't know think about it okay think about what needs to be added we are running out of time so we'll stop here but think about what needs to be added to this or maybe this is not the right way of doing it capital m into m huh? why is one wrong think about it <laughs> okay let me stop here and we'll uh... how do i stop the recording oh i have to do this now